Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snacker Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Good morning, Mavs fans. Welcome to Moneyball Minute. My name is Kirk Henderson, and I'm editor-in-chief of MavsMoneyball.com. Thank you for joining me this Thursday morning, October 27th. Uh, I know you've gotten a lot of content from us at Mavs Moneyball lately, a recap podcast from Josh Bow and I, where I am very mad online, a 90-minute group therapy where we uh, proceeded to complain and try to figure out what was wrong with the Mavs and that really frustrating loss to the Pelicans. But there was some good stuff around the internet, and I wanted to share it since the Mavericks have games uh, tonight and then Saturday and Sunday. By the time we were to talk again, probably a little later in the week, uh, some of these things, I didn't want to forget about them. So coming up first, there was a really incredible piece on basketballnews.com from Nikias Duncan, who's just one of the best analysts around, where he breaks down uh, how the Christian Wood experiment, as he calls it, is going. Um, he gets into a film explanation. He's really a great explainer of basketball. Uh, and he talks about how the, the Luka Doncic pick and roll is just so... At this point, um, unstoppable, to be quite honest with you. Um, And talks a little bit about the defense and basically the ways that teams are going to struggle to guard uh, the Mavericks if they continue to exploit the pick-and-roll opportunities and play Luka Doncic and Christian Wood together. Don't want to spoil anything from the piece. You should go and click on it in the show notes. It is absolutely outstanding. Uh, Probably one of the best things I've read about the Mavericks. Going back to the start of the preseason, the second piece I wanted to point you to was Josh Bowe uh, wrote, he both wrote the recap last night and then when writing the recap and then talking to me on the podcast, he talked about how he thinks that the Mavericks are getting fewer open three-point looks. Well, by dump, uh, jumping into the data, publicly available data on NBA.com, he was able to figure out that right now that is true. Uh, and he gets into the numbers and sort of what's happening and why. And is is you know he doesn't really talk about how the Mavericks are going to break this because you know basically what happens or what happened last year and what happens a lot of the time is Luka Doncic draws defenses in when he gets into the lane in penetration. But what's happened both in the Phoenix game or elements of the Phoenix game and the the New Orleans game is defenders are staying closer to Reggie Bullock and to Dorian Finney-Smith. Christian Wood, not so much because on these pick and roll and pick and pop situations, it's frankly too difficult for defenses to scramble. But guys who are in the corners, they're staying home on, which means Luka has a little more space around the basket, but also means he's not passing out near as much because the passes just aren't necessarily there. That means fewer open looks, which means fewer available threes for the Mavericks relative to what they were uh, doing last year. And it's something to keep a watch on because, you know, Luka Doncic against the Pelicans went 14 of 17 from two point range. Uh, I suggested to Josh that the potential uh, thing that they could 
you know, do to break defenses out of this is Luka just going and scoring 45 points every night. But I think to a certain extent, defenses may live with that. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens if Luka can continue to push uh, and, and maybe force defenses to adjust with how much he's scoring or if the Mavericks come up with some interesting uh, ideas in order to get defenses out of what they're seeing. Some of it could involve, frankly, more off-ball movement, which we've been talking about for a really, really long time that we would like to see more of. Um, the next piece I wanted to point you to was Brent Brooks uh, turned in another uh, piece at Mavs Moneyball where he looks at this uh, video from a YouTuber called um, Jimmy High Roller, and it's about breaking the rules and getting away with it, and he expounds upon it talking about how uh, offensive basketball is essentially here to stay and why the different moves that have evolved and what they do and how they're basically really, really difficult to uh, defend against. And, you know, the NBA likes it this way. They're, the scoring is just so much higher than it was uh, 20 years ago. And I think um, teams in the NBA really like that scoring is better for um, ratings. The last piece was ESPN did a future power rankings. They do this two to three times a year. And essentially what they're doing is ranking NBA teams over the next three seasons. And they factor in players. So who's on the team who could get better management, uh, the like their salary cap, what the market is like, and then their draft assets. The Mavericks actually fell despite going to the Western Conference Finals last year. They are currently 13th in the league. And that's because more or less past Luka Doncic, a lot of analysts are not super impressed with what the Mavericks have depth wise. I wonder if, if Christian Wood continues at this sort of torrid pace, if that were to change in the second half of the year power rankings, but more or less, I think teams understand what the Mavericks have. It's, it's a very similar group of guys last year and they're all getting older. They're not a younger group. I mean, the Pel the uh, Memphis Grizzlies lead are, are the number one team just because of the youth and their books and their, their draft assets and, and uh, something which like the Mavericks can't really participate, uh, in, and, and keep up with, um, as much as I love this team, we've talked about this, but the, the Mavericks are suffering from team building concepts that go back before Luka was drafted. I mean, the Mavericks went uh, up until they drafted Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson. They went an extraordinary amount of time without drafting somebody who could be considered really a functional player. Uh, some of that, they traded away picks. When you're playing with Dirk in his prime, you you don't often need picks. and You, know, you go get Jason Kidd, which can help lead you to a title. But more or less, the Mavericks have been pretty poor at team building for a really long time. Um, and that is starting to catch up with them relative to some of the other uh, uh, wannabe contenders. Um, I still obviously love this team. I cover them every day. It's not that I'm, I'm being critical for the sake of being critical. It's just it's a little it's it's sort of maddening to see because when you get a generational superstar like Luka Doncic you want to do your best to build a contender around him and a lot of what the Mavericks have done since drafting him is take risks that have not panned out um but that's that okay guys the Mavericks play the Nets tonight and hopefully that is a victory because the Nets seem to be a bit of a mess um they're you know they played Brooklyn uh, I'm sorry, they played Milwaukee last night, and that was a wild game. And like Steve Nash got super mad. It's oh, really something else. Um, thanks so much for hanging out with me on your Thursday morning, and we will talk to you a little later today. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.